Okay, uh, this is a picture of a combined cycle engine. Talk about theory because I don't have a lathe or a mill or any fancy tools to build it. I really wish I had, but I also consider this video important because I'm pretty sure combined cycle is not a very well-known subject and I've done probably research, but I'm not going to post up my research paper I did for college. Here I'm, you'll see the picture is a V formation. The one side that looks like has it the spark plug is the gasoline side. The other side is the heat cycle side, the one that doesn't look like it has the, the, any no spark plug. <coughs> When I drew this, for some odd reason, I thought it was better for the gas to flow through the exhaust first, and then go through the, the block. I realize that's not exactly a good idea, because the exhaust gases are hotter than the block, and going the block first in the exhaust manifold last, I can get a higher temperature and better thermal efficiency out of the, the system. Because usually the block temperature is cooler than the exhaust manifold temperature. And also you're using less steel for the exhaust manifold Fold, so you can use more expensive types that can are more heat re resistant and thermal fatigue resistant because in the usually it, an ICE engines that you they go when you're they go through they cool down when you're not not in use and warm back up and that can cause thermal fatigue. Here I have a little blower. It's a, you can see the heat system is set up similar to the steam, but I'm using actually gas as the working fluid. The reason is because a gas can can doesn't have a therm, a temperature limit, and it makes increases the thermal efficiency greatly because with water you have your lower temperature is limited by the volume point or most car car engines that's the temperature the average temperature right when they that they are at probably is a few more degrees but I don't know how much but a, a good guess is around boiling and how much pressure that they can design for the cooling system depends probably a little bit higher temperatures and hmm yeah also gas is much more simple don't have to have boilers just have sections the only problem is the Using gas to work in fluid, it has to be compressed. Compressed probably roughly to 100 psi. It all depends on how pr high pressure. It depends on cost and performance balance. So it's like yeah, those things have just have to balance out. So it's because low pressure you're not going to get very much a big pressure differential and so you would end up getting big the heat side won't generate right, much HP on the other hand if you go really high pressure you get a great pressure differential but not But you would have be much more expensive because you would have to have a lot more, more, or 
robustness to take the pressure. So it's like finding that sweet spot between the size of the engine and power out output and reinforcement. Now I have three slides on the equations here. I go through them. I like say here's the calculation where I start off of the heat side. This is more calculations. And okay, the very last slide you can see this is the last set of calculations and my estimate on deficiency increase and MPG estimate of of it if it was if I would have traded in my put in a like, combined cycle engine like this into my pickup. Though and now I'm gonna talk about the downsides. The downsides to a combined cycle engine like this is you have when you first start it up you only running off the your gas, your gas part of the engine because the engine is cold, so you only have the cold HP. So when you warm up, which might take a, roughly a minute, you now have your hot HP, which is more. And ah, so. With a uh, reason why I wanted that's what I showed you, like say, a reason why I chose this design over like a Sterling is because of con I can of how much control of the heat external heat engine part of the engine you could have. You can actually control the throttle better. There's ways to control Sterlings, but that's controlling the heat flow given to it, or how much heat you're giving it. While this, you don't. You don't worry about the heat flow. You just turn a blood of butterfly valve, and sh that shuts off the similar what you do on the gas side. And roughly, the control is similar to what a steam engine throttle control would be like. Even though we're not using we're not using steam, we're using gas instead. And cooling is probably be controlled by balancing the throttles between the gas part of the engine and the external heat in the engine part. And uh, also future, even though at this time it's kind of late in the internal combustion game, I believe there's still applications out there. I think it, the be very good for use for for farmers who have a lot of biomass. You can probably can convert that biomass to a burnable form to feed this engine and run it. And I think if it's done right, it can do. You can get good efficiency and might be even but more efficient than a fuel cell. Okay, this is ends my theory on combined cycle, my design of a combined cycle engine.